Hi friends, today we have Anand Nakat with us. Uh, hi Anand, thanks for thanks for joining with us. Uh, Anand has done very well in the Gate 2022 paper. Uh, hi Anand, welcome. Hello sir. Yeah, Anand, can you please share some details about yourself, like when you graduated and what is your education background? Sure, sir. Uh, no, sir, first of all, thank you for allowing me to share my experience. And I hope that this will help the current aspirants uh, in their preparation. Like yeah. I had gone through few of the testimonials of the previous year ranker when I okay. myself started my preparation. And I also decided that I should be up there. Like I kind of used to see myself at that position. And now that it's actually happening, it feels really great. Uh, and sir, coming okay. to my educational background, and currently I'm in my fourth year. I'm doing my BE from D.R. Patel College, Pune. Okay. And before that, I was just going with the flow. Like I had decent technical knowledge of what I have been taught so far, but uh, okay. I had never, never really scoped out from career or future point of view. So I was like, I would settle for some uh, average placement through our college when we have had decent placement at our college before that. But uh, that was when I had this realization that uh, you know, how I should proceed now, like from a uh, career point of view, as placement would be starting in few months then. And mm -hmm. that was when I decided that I should appear for GATE, as it would give me a chance to study at the best institutes of India and avail the best opportunities. So that was the main motive behind appearing for GATE. So I was enrolled at an academy and I started okay. my preparation from January, like last, last year. Last and, year, Jan. Yes, sir. Okay. And the timing was perfect. I mean, just when I decided that I should be, I would be appearing for GATE. And then only I came to know that the new batch was starting in just two days. So, and also throughout my preparation, my college was online. So there was no such any burden of assignments or attendance. And okay. so everything aligned perfectly. I mean, as if it was meant to be. So, so you took advantage of the, uh, uh, what do you say, online college and like you were able to manage your time very well. Yes, sir, fortunately. So this was my first attempt only and I managed to make the best out of it. Okay. So yeah, can you please share your experience like uh, how Gate of Life course helped you and uh, uh, on an average, like how many hours you used to put in and how, what was your preparation strategy for the Gate exam? Yes, sir. Uh, I was a test series enrolled uh, student of Gate of Life. Okay. And, and coming to the daily, daily number of hours. So I used to judge my day from the perspective of whether I was able to complete the task that I had planned uh, rather than from number of hours. So I had a rough idea what I needed to do that day. And what I should do was I would write down those tasks in some task manager, like watch this lecture of this subject or solve previous year question of this topic of this subject. So like that. And when I used to complete those, I used to mark them. Like that used to give me a sense of achievement. Like, you know, that would help me to uh, complete the next task uh, for the day. Okay. And what some people might do is, you know, they create a very strict time bound schedule, like for the day, like wake up at seven o'clock or then study from eight to nine and then uh, solve questions from nine to 10 like that. So the problem with this, with this is that sometimes you, if you're not able to complete the task within that time, then you know, it will demotivate you and also affect the further yeah. tasks that you will do because it will be always in your mind that, uh, you know, you were, you were not able to complete the task or you're running or you're running right like that. So it almost never works. So it's, it's better to drop the task for the day without any time bound. And the final end should be that you should be completing those tasks by the end of the day. So what you're trying to say is uh, the to-do list or the, the, the work for the day you used to list down at the starting of the day itself. And uh, uh, you do not have strict time bounds. And, yes. But the thing is that we should end up and you used to have realistic uh, tasks like which are achievable throughout the day. Yes, sir. I mean, those tasks that we are putting up, they should be reasonable. Yeah, great, how great. many tasks they should be we should be doing that was uh, i will be sharing next what i actually created i actually created a timeline for me like uh, by yeah. the month of july i realized that i was running behind the clock like i had around uh, six to seven subjects left by them to complete so i kind of brainstormed like how should i proceed next like because i had to complete my syllabus as soon as possible so okay. i kind of thought so i came across this timeline so i created a timeline for myself where I actually created a timeline structure, like with the starting date and what subjects I'll be doing daily. And I also fed into that key, how many, how many lectures I'll be doing daily of this subject. So, so according to that, I had an estimate of each subject by like, by what date I'll be completing each subject. So by that, uh, by the total approximation, I had, uh, I had an estimate of around 
that yes by 31st of october i would be completing my whole syllabus mm-hmm. and i followed that i followed the whole whole structure i followed the whole timeline structure very strictly like even to an extent that i put the timeline design as my uh, lock screen wallpaper of my mobile so that i would be constantly reminded by that yes i am on the timeline okay. so that was the advantage that i had with the timeline that i mean it is the advantage with the timeline you have that is that you know one thing is sure that if you follow it strictly you will you you will know that yes by this time you will finish your syllabus so you will have an actual uh, date before in mind that just yes, by this time my syllabus will be completed and one more thing is that it adds more credibility to your preparation like uh, you when you know that you are on the timeline you know you cannot really afford to miss any single day because exactly. since you have a date before your mind you know that even if you waste a few days that date will be delayed so that yeah. adds a more kind of credibility to your preparation so yeah. we have seen also seen that the students who set targets from the for themselves so they have work in front of them they have a date in front of them if if they don't follow that or they waste time in some other activities which are not so important so they end up missing their timeline but the students exactly. who don't have a date or any kind of a schedule or anything in front of them so they are free to do anything so they end up like they end up wasting time or spending the time on tasks which are not very important okay great and so also yeah. for cac we have a uh, 12 to 30 subjects to prepare and just doing them on the go is not enough we require a proper plan uh, for them to complete so that we can have the maximum time for ourselves for the test and revision so yeah. that was uh, that that was the reason mm-hmm. i created this timeline and that really helped me to a great extent great 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 uh, thing which you have shared i am definite i'm sure that this will help the upcoming students to a great extent also now coming to the test series now you had set a schedule by end of september if i'm not wrong that you will complete yes, sir, your the, syllabus yes sir, by the i completed my syllabus by the first week of november so okay. until then i did not give any test of gate applied but mm-hmm. if you are planning on purchasing more than one test series which i think you should do so mm-hmm. what you can do is the thing with the thing with the thing is uh, that you will have lots of uh, topic based on subject wise tests so it so it may not be possible to give all of them you know if you plan to give all of them after you complete the syllabus so i would recommend that you should start with one test series while you are completing your syllabus so mm-hmm. you can you can attempt the uh, subject wise tests or topic wise tests as you are completing your syllabus of the subject that you have already completed and mm-hmm. once you co- once you uh, complete your whole syllabus then you can attend the next test series so that's what i did okay. i i did not attend any gate apply test while i was uh, while i was uh, completing preparing my first yeah so once i completed i started with the topic wise test so i mean every time before i used to give any test i used to revise the whole subject so topic wise test i felt they were a bit on harder side because obviously they dive, they, they are in more depth topic. yeah Uh, exactly sir so uh yeah so so you need to know exactly what what you need to focus upon because you will also come across few questions in those topic wise tests that you might feel that those are a bit out of context as per gate syllabus so i mean this is where solving previous year questions will help you because versus all the previous year questions of the subject you will know like what part you need to focus upon or what part you can skip because i learned it the hard way like okay. initially when i was giving few tests uh i went chasing after all the questions like even if even if some question was bit out of syllabus so i used to refer those uh, reference the reference book i used to refer i used to read those topic i mean even though it was not really required so uh so those uh, solving solving the previous year questions it will really help to analyze your test properly and it will so, save you a lot, lot, lot of time actually so once you have completed your syllabus <clears throat> so obviously your focus will be more on test series and previous year questions and revision can you please like elaborate like how you have spent your time and how you have managed the time like post uh, i guess november till january so how you have and especially when attempting the questions from the test series like how you used to correct yourself uh, given incorrect questions and unattempted questions like ha huh. can you please uh, shed some light on this sure sir uh, as i previously mentioned that i i used to uh, solve the previous year questions along with when i was completing my syllabus so i had that i had a thought in my mind that when i complete my syllabus i would have done the previous year questions at least two times for each subject so as soon as i completed my subject i had a fair knowledge i had a fair amount of problem solving skills so 
uh what i used to do was i there is a productivity tool known as notion they have a website of their own so whenever i used to attempt any test and so after giving the test i used to analyze i mean i was okay. my focus was more on the uh, i was uh, my focus was more on the marks that i could not score so okay. on that notion website i used to create uh, one page for each of the test like and i used to write down every mark that i could not score uh, every mark that i could not score like one mark of this topic of this test Uh, two marks of this topic or this test, and I was I was just I was just to classify them as whether it was a grammatical mistake, uh, whether it was a silly mistake, or whether it was a conceptual mistake like that. And so that way I used to fine tune my revision. Like during my full length test, obviously, I mean by that by that time when I started giving my full length test, because I had given a lots of uh, subject wise and topic wise test. So by that time I had done lots of revision. Like for each subject, yes. I must have done like three to four times revision. I had done so. uh so that's why i need not do revision of all the subject after giving any full length test so based on based on what i had done mistakes uh, mm-hmm. i used to write down every every mark that i could not score uh, every mark that i could not score i used to write down on that page and only the topics i used to i used to revise again okay so so you are so uh, your attempt to the subject uh, to the test series to the test and uh, either the subject wise or topic test itself acted as a revision So only the topics yes, where you uh, committed mistakes, you used to go back to your notes or reference material, so that uh, that is rectified. So any other tips like uh, you would like to share with other future aspirants, or to put this question another way, that is there anything uh, where you feel that you should have changed in your preparation and uh, you could have done it better? Uh, well, sir, I have few suggestions. Is uh, first was the timeline that I mentioned. I wish that I could have uh, done that sooner. I mean, okay. but it was okay that I realized that sooner, and it was okay. So I would suggest that to create a timeline uh, as soon as you're starting your preparation, so that you have an exact date of the syllabus completion. And okay. second thing I would like to add is that to do to do revision of the completed subjects like regularly after a certain interval. Uh, what I used to do was I used to solve previous year questions in my lecture notes only or uh, topic wise. So if I was revising any subject after a long time. it used to take me too long to even go through those questions and sometimes i even used to doubt myself like how i was able to solve this question so uh-huh. the revision used to be too tedious and boring so so make sure you revise the completed subjects after a certain interval regularly okay and also i have a one special uh, one special suggestion for those people who did not attempt this year's paper or those who mm-hmm. attempted it but not with the complete preparation so what they can do is they can solve all the previous year questions for the subject except for this year So why is yeah. this? Because this way you can attempt this year's paper as a mock test. Yeah, uh, in the last during your last month, and yeah. that will be the best mock test you can attempt because yeah. afterwards it's actual get paper, and you can also check where you can stand in. I mean, comp- you can also compare your actual scores with this year's actual scores. And I too tried to do the same uh, with the uh, 2021 paper, but I could not refrain myself from solving those questions. Like I constantly wanted to test myself if I was able to solve those questions uh, with my current knowledge, and I, and I ended up solving all of them. But yeah. I advise you to uh, leave these year questions, and then you can attempt those that paper as a complete mock exam. Yeah, that's a very good tip which you have shared. That uh, the actual gate paper it acts as the best way to test yourself, the best the best possible mock uh, exam of the gate because that is the actual gate exam. The only thing which you have to do is refrain from referring to it during your preparation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, Anand. Uh, thanks for your time, and we wish you all the best. Uh, take care. Thank you, sir.